Hello, everyone. This is Ronnie Bincer, the Hangout Helper. We're here for our first Q&A questions and answers show about how do you use Hangouts and all the good stuff involved with it. I've got a phenomenal group of people with me, and I know there's a lot of you out there watching live either on YouTube or in the Google Plus stream. Thank you so much for joining us. I just want to start by introducing the folks that are in what's called the film strip, these people down on the bottom, and on the far left, we have Dave Williams. Dave Williams, please say hello and tell us a little bit about yourself. Oh, my, I've got to do an introduction. There, you threw another one, little twist at me. Good. Well, I, you know, thanks very much for uh, bringing me in as the novice to Hangouts and Hangouts on Air. They're really exciting technology. But I come in from looking at the live broadcasting area and the webinar area. So I'm looking at uh, today as trying to reflect the questions that I have as a new user trying to consider, you know, does a, a Hangout or a Hangout Air offer a really good replacement for a webinar tool like WebEx or GoToMeeting? Or in the live broadcasting area, I've got, I'm going to be the host of a a live show coming up in September called Find Your New Normal and I'm trying to consider should I use Ustream or Livestream or now you know YouTube Live. So uh, I'm looking at this as an outsider coming in although I've been on Hangouts for about a year. Uh, Hangouts on air are pretty uh, interesting to me but I see this as a new kind of paradigm and I'm not quite sure where it fits in uh, from a business perspective to generate more leads or call to action or more revenue it's not just a you know casual hangout place that uh, everyone uses okay sounds good and just so everybody knows Dave's been behind the scenes helping me with business strategies and planning for quite a while he disappeared for a bit and he's back and so we're very glad to have him back alright so next in line we've got many people know our friend Mark Traphagen Mark please introduce yourself and let us know what you're here for, and then uh, we'll move forward. Hi, I'm Mark Trapagan. I'm Director of Digital Outreach with Verante, a search marketing agency in the uh, Raleigh, North Carolina area. And uh, I've been on Google Plus since its third day, and uh, would hate to ever calculate how many hours I've spent since then here, <laughs> like many of us uh, here as well. And, and Ronnie, I'm, I'm thinking the Google Plus gods have arranged the film strip today probably in ascending order of... Uh, hang out on air ability and experience. Uh, if Dave's the novice, I'm getting intermediate. I've been in hundreds of them. Well, you uh, get interviewed a lot. I mean, this is part of the deal. But I, I don't conduct many, so I'm, okay. uh, you know, I'm still a novice, probably in the area of really running one and organizing one. So I'm here to learn on that aspect too, and to lend you whatever support and just to share my enthusiasm for the things you'll be talking about uh, today. You'll get into shortly. So yeah, glad to be with you. Fantastic. Okay, Martin Shervington from across the pond, as they say. Please introduce yourself. Yes, I'm Martin. I run the Plus Your Business and Plus Your Life communities on Google+. Plus. I think Mark's right. I, I know that Ronnie knows more than me, than, <laughs> than I do about Hangouts, so I think I, I quite like that. I see this as, as working really well. Um, and I do Hangouts for both those communities, and I get by. But if I need help, I always go to Ronnie, as he, as he knows. I'm not in the wrong way, I guess. Um, and uh, you know, I'm interested to see what the questions are, because it helps me calibrate what's going on in the community as well, um, as to what I need to learn and, and stay on top of. You bet. OK, so let's just dive right into this. So everybody knows, and so that the film strip members know as well, I've asked them to help me clarify questions in case I'm not sure about what people are asking out there as well as bring in their perceptions or perspectives in case mine isn't exactly what they've seen and then we can discuss how that goes. So someone, and I'm going to bring up some comments often on using a thing called a comment tracker. This is Phyllis. Phyllis has asked, hey, nice to be here again. I sent you a question. Should I copy and paste it here? The answer is yes, because if it's somewhere else, I have no idea where it is right now because I'm busy running this here show. So if you do have questions and you can keep them short, please stick them in the event comment area or on YouTube because I'm able to track it from both of those places right now live and we will try our best to bring those up visually into the show just like we did right there. So um, Tony Green is stating, hey, he's here on mobile. Great. If that, that probably means he is probably watching on YouTube because one of the issues with the event tool, which is where I'm sort of packaging this show right now, is it does not allow us to let people watch the video inside the event on a mobile device, which is a bit of a bummer, but it is what it is. Um, and then another question, 
And feel free, you guys in the film strip, if there's other comments as you're going, go for it. Uh, actually, here's one for Martin. Or no, no, it's not Martin. I'm sorry. Uh, Russ Worthy, can you share that webinar on air community? Does anyone know what he's? Oh, that's G yeah. But that's he had left a message earlier in the stream saying that he is a webinar to hang out on air user, and it uh, G plus works great, and there is a community with conversations about it. But he okay. hasn't yet said what is the community name. Oh, I know. I work with Russ, and he is he does a lot with a um, genealogy community. And so, but they are using Hangouts and Hangouts on Air. So, but there may be something else that he's doing there too. So, um, Frank out there, Frank has said, how do I keep the film boxes up while you're talking? And film boxes, I'm assuming he means these things down on the bottom, which I call the film strip. And the film strip is only visible nowadays if you have three or more attendees inside the Hangout itself. If you have one person or two people, the film box is not visible. That's a choice that Google has made. Um, and so what I do if I want to bring it in for sure is I bring in another camera. Like I just bring in a second computer, possibly using my same account, and now I have, I can just put up a blank screen or a branded little box, and then the film strip shows up. There is a tool we have called the Cameraman tool, if you are the Hangout on Air host, which allows you to turn on or turn off the film strip, but by default, it is automatically off if there's only one or two people inside the Hangout, Hangout on Air. Now, and, and a little clarification, if you're inside the film strip, you will always see the Hangout on Air because, and all the film strip stuff because it always shows to you, but what's being broadcast does not show the film strip on the bottom if there's only one or two parties inside the Hangout. So looking for another... Uh, do, 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 do go to the tool okay other people are answering other people's questions which is great I just want to find one I think I'm going to bring up oh and by the way I don't know if you see it in the stream but this thing called help outs came out visibly last night this is something that I think I'm going to be very interested in and it's the ability to run a hangout and charge a fee for your time in it and I think it's a game changer assuming they've done it right, and Google hopefully will do it right. They're planning on using Hangouts as the engine, but there's going to be a scheduling and a payment system built into it, which I think is pretty exciting for me. All right. Um, I, uh, can I add something to that, Ronnie? Please do. Um, just, to, just so I say something here. Um, <laughs> the uh, I, I think I was chatting about this with some people this morning, and I, I think seeing what they're rolling out now, I think the value proposition is going to be for people who don't have much tech savvy themselves and want to do this and want something to set up and they don't mind therefore paying Google the, the percentage that Google wants um, for setting us up for you. Um, there, it's been obvious to a lot of us that there are alternatives to doing a system, ways to set this up on your own where obviously you know all the uh, profits would come to yourself uh, rather than sharing them with Google. Uh, obviously, you can't do it within the platform itself, per se, uh, as it's set up now. But anyway, that's just offering that alternative. Uh, I think that's where the market's going to be for it. Yeah, I'm, I'm, and because it just sort of vis visually showed up within the last 12 hours or so, um, I'm not going to say a lot about it because I haven't done enough research, but I am seeing there is potential conflict for people like me that is already using this Hangout tool to do training, and I already invoice people outside. It's not mm -hmm. a totally packaged system, but um, if they're saying I can either do one or the other, then I might just continue doing what I'm doing. But Have you seen something that, they're, that they are saying that? that maybe. Oh, okay. Um, all I'm saying is I haven't read through all the specific details, and that devil is in the details, as they say. So that's what we're looking for. So just some people that when I made a post on it late last night, I was about to go to sleep last night, okay, <laughs> at 2 a.m. to get ready for the show here, and someone pinged me and said, hey, look at this, here it is, it's live. It's like, okay. So then I spent another hour doing some research and posting about it, and this is the thing that I do. I try to keep up on these things as quickly as possible, but I did get some sleep, at least three hours, <laughs> before I could come in here. So um, I still don't know all the answers on that yet, and I don't know that anybody does at this point because it's not actually publicly available. It's invite only, and I've not been invited. I've asked. So let me bring up um, another comment. 
question here. Someone says, can, this is Nicholas. Can one do an HOA, meaning hang out on air, just to a specific circle? And the answer is no. Um, you can invite a specific circle to watch, but because it's a hangout on air, by default, it's public, which means anybody in the world could potentially see it. It may be easier for those circle members that have, quote, been invited to see it in one way, shape, or form, but it is not possible to do a private hangout on air, though I have tried. Trust me. <laughs> You've tried every workaround every time. Yes. Uh, sometimes I discover... Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes I'll discover something and Google will politely turn it off. So, um, yeah. but we'll doing the I've got a question here which I'm going to flip from Madeline Moy. Great. Uh, asking about cut into videos during a hangout. You might want to clarify running between hangout and hangout on air. What what the uh, the potential issues are around that. Sure. Let me. I'll leave yours up. Leave it up there on the screen for a second so I can uh, read it. Is the only way to bring in video or images during the hangout? For example, if we were having a hangout and then I wanted to cut to a video, can yeah. I do that? So that's that's good. So the basic answer for that is a hangout versus a hangout on air are two different things. When a hangout on air is activated, you are broadcasting live, you're creating what's called a video. And in the process of creating a video, Google, you can turn off the question if you like, Martin. Um, Google doesn't like you to have a video within a video generally, therefore because of that there's copyright concerns, therefore Hangout On Air makes it a little bit trickier to stream a live video inside of your Hangout because that's a video within a video. There are other tools that many people use in the YouTube Live or the live broadcasting place to do that a little bit more efficiently, but the Hangout tool itself, the Hangout On Air tool itself does not have a way to use that. Even though there's a YouTube app, when you run it inside a Hangout on Air, you can see it inside the film strip, but the people watching on the outside do not actually see the video because but of copy. Can copy. I, oh, I'd like to add to that. Uh, sure. There's a clever workaround if you want to get a little fancy by using an encoder called Wirecast. Right. Wirecast allows you to send your camera stream into uh, Google. So rather than right now, I've turned on my USB camera and I'm in the film strip. If I was using Wirecast, I would be in the film strip as a Wirecast user, and in Wirecast, I can bring up a video or audio file and play that instead of me. And that's what I've done in webinars and small groups in Hangouts. Now, I haven't tried a Hangout on Air yet, uh, yeah. but I do know Wirecast Lite is within Hangout on Air, so I would imagine the same capability is there that you can play videos, recorded videos and audio files as, yes. uh, you know, an let extra... Me, let me jump jump in here. Yes, you can do it. Yes, it's much more difficult. Yes, it can cause problems, and you may actually have your account shut down. So just be advised it might be not the best choice when you're doing a live Hangout on Air because of copyright concerns, and that's unfortunately part of what we have to deal with. Bottom line here is if you do a get up... A, end up getting a copyright strike because it isn't your video or even if it is your hangout on air capability will be shut down for approximately 34 days ask me why I know okay so anyways the the key is streaming live video inside a hangout on air is possible it's a little bit trickier and you run a risk of copyright concerns okay as far as sharing still shots this is something I do on a regular basis using the tool inside a hangout on air called the screen share tool and you just have a presentation sitting on your computer you do your screen share show that and you can actually move from slide to slide to slide the copyright police don't seem to care about that very much but they do seem to care about live video at least from my experience so hopefully that answers that question but go ahead Martin I was gonna say can you add in as well about presentations if people want to share more than one image just on the screen share what's the best way of, of showing a presentation you mean more than one image at a time or from screen to, to screen yeah from screen to screen um, I have found um, I've done some presentations on this like hangout on air telling you how to do presentations and I've used Google Drive which is one tool that almost everybody has because they're in Google here yep. Um, and so they can have multiple slides and just shift from slide to slide, but the way you do that most efficiently is by doing a screen share of the presentation. And I, I'm on a Mac, therefore when I have five or ten images that I want to share and go from one to the next, I actually just save them as a JPEG, open them up in a 
built-in program on my Mac called Preview, and then I can just go from image to image to image and do that as part of my teaching. I do that on a regular basis. In fact, let me let me use this opportunity here to say a lot of this teaching is about to start happening here in a brand new place that I'm building. It's called Hangout Mastery. It's going to be a membership paid for environment where you can come in and learn the deep dive, the deep end of Hangouts. I'm still going to be public. I'll still be out there helping as best I can like we're doing right now. But if you were to go to this place, thehangouthelper.com slash members, right now it's still in pre-launch mode. We'd hope that we'd be launched by today, but I still want to do a few more tests to make sure that the sign-up process is clean and error-free, if at all possible. So by the end of the day today, or possibly tomorrow, this will actually take you to the site where you can sign up. And if you get on the list today, you'll be in what's called pre-launch mode, and we'll lock in your membership pricing. If you sign up today or tomorrow, whenever, you're going to be able to lock in the membership pricing, what's called charter membership pricing, which is the lower end, it will rise in the near future. So I'm going to leave that up on the screen so everybody sees where to go for it. But it's an exciting place for me. I'm going to, it's got two parts. It's going to have the membership part, which is like a regular membership site if you've ever been to one, but it's also going to have a private Google Plus community in which the members will join me, we'll do Hangout training, we'll be doing screen shares, I'll be showing you how to do certain things, and we'll making, be making a video out of that. And that video will then be brought back into the membership environment so that everybody in the membership area can watch that private video. So that's kind of neat. Looking forward to it. Let me ask a, a, continuing, a continuing question that Martin had just said about presentation. And Ronnie, you were saying Google Drive as the alternative to use. Why not PowerPoint? I use PowerPoint all the time sure. and use screen share to bring it up. And the advantage to me is all the transitions, transitions all the animations, sure. yep. you know, so that I can have my presentation look very professional using PowerPoint. Any presentation tool pretty much will work. I'm simply pointing out that Google Drive is free, so everybody here has it. Ah. If you have another presentation tool that you want to use, just keep this one thing in mind. If it's possible to keep a menu bar on the top, a title bar, so you can move it around somewhere on the screen, you're going to have a better result sharing your screen. If you share your desktop, then you sort of lose track as to the details as to where you are and what's going on. So if you can move your presentation around in presentation mode, then doing a screen share with that is going to actually be better. And one other thing that's helpful to know, in case you've tried screen shares in the past and the quality wasn't good enough, the Hangouts now, the Hangout on Air, are at 720p, meaning high definition automatically. You don't have to do anything. It just does it for you. And that means these screen shares, where they might have been harder to read before, are now much easier to read because the 720p is most efficiently used when you have a still shot there for a short period of time, then it renders it a lot better. It, it also ties back into the idea of having another computer coming into the Hangout as well, doesn't it? Because you could actually stay with you speaking and just be clicking the buttons on a, another device. You could, yes. And there's, there's levels of mastery that you want to dig into, and that's the kind of stuff that we'll be talking about in this membership site. But yes. I can have five different computers and have five different thumbnails that I could manually connect. In fact, let's bring in the question someone had here, right here. This is Jim. Jim is asking, are you or the person speaking controlling what or who shows up on the screen? Uh, the answer is yes and no. It depends. Um, there's a thing in the film strip where I click on someone. Let's say I'm going to click on Mark. Is that okay, Mark? Sure. Okay. I'm just clicking on Mark. I just blue boxed him is what we call it, or I pinned him. He is now visible even though I'm talking. <laughs> yes, Not okay. on my screen. You're still there. Well, everybody on the inside can see whatever they want, but what the public sees is what the Hangout on Air host sees. So this if is why I, yep. you never pick your nose in a live Hangout. You never know when <laughs> Ronnie's clicked on you. Exactly, yes. So generally, when somebody makes a sound or a noise, if the host has not blue boxed anyone, then the camera automatically switches. And this is one of the best parts about Hangouts. It's an automatic camera switcher, either a Hangout or a Hangout on Air. Primarily what the host of the Hangout on Air sees is what the public sees. So if I go through and say Martin wants me to feature him for a second, I just clicked on him. He's now in the main screen even though I'm talking. 
Why do we when... do that, Mark? Why do we both do? <laughs> I don't know. We're <laughs> we're old fools. <laughs> something something to do. So that was a good question. Just thought I'd try to address the answer to that one. So the I'm... control is both, depending on what the host is doing. I did flick this one around from Jeffrey. I know we touched on it, but you, I know there's another answer to this, Ronnie. Isn't there a why? Isn't there a YouTube app that turns in that, that a, runs? Yeah, I guess that runs but, in a HOA. Uh, and you, I, can you explain what you think that means? I think when you're in a HOA and you use the YouTube app, it actually plays, but the people outside of the Hangout don't see it. Right. And that's the thing: is you think it's, it could be recording, but it's not. It's very clever. It's so Jeffrey, clever no, it doesn't, you, can, you can play it from the inside, but it's not. It, it won't actually you know, be recorded. Right. And someone had a comment, and I may find it later, but it's in the stream somewhere. Let me just address it. The the question was, can I make a video capture of a private hangout? And the answer is yes. I do that every day with my clients. So as an example, this is similar. Actually, I don't know enough about helpouts yet to say it's related, but it might be. When I meet with a client and I'm in a hangout. I will use a second computer, do a video capture of that. I use a program called ScreenFlow. You can use another one called Camtasia. Both of those do a good job capturing the sound, which is important, as well as the video of a Hangout. And that is a third-party tool. When I'm done with my Hangout session, I then render the video, upload it to YouTube, make it a private video so just the client and I have access to it. And that is a way for us to, in essence, document what happened or went on during our session. As far as private Hangouts, you cannot do that at this point with a Hangout on Error. You can only do it with regular non-Hangout on Error. Yeah, I do. Martin tells me I do a lot of these rabbit... I, I do, but, but let me just point this out. <laughs> that's just that's just trumped it. It's okay. Thanks, John Martin. <laughs> is that what jazz hands means? Is this, this no is jazz hands? Are those more ones. like this. Oh, those are, oh. Those are bunny rabbit ears that you do. <laughs> okay, okay. Thanks, thanks for helping to find. It's fine. So it's let me here. let me bring up and and just to clarify and tie up in a nice pretty bow what Martin was saying. Yes, the Hangout on Air tool for those on the inside will allow you to use the YouTube app to play a video. However. Anybody else on the outside that's watching or the video that they're watching later will not actually see what everybody's talking about and they'll wonder what's going on because they can't see it. So um, Irene, Irene has a question. How would you best approach people popping on and off the panel during a Hangout? Great question. I don't let them do it. <laughs> <laughs> so, but that, that's the way I'd prefer to run my Hangouts on air. If you want to invite multiple people and they're just going to come in and come out, there is a nice way to manage that, and that's called the Cameraman app. And in the Cameraman app, you can basically set it up so that when someone first arrives, they are visually hidden, they call it muted, and audio muted when they first arrive. You wait till they're looking good and they're ready, and then you as the host click on the thumbnail below them and turn on their camera, and then they can be part of the Hangout. So that is a way, in case, for example, people come in late, um, that's a way to help manage that entry. So the people on the inside will see them with sort of a milky wash over them. They can't hear them, and no one in the outside can actually see that they're there until the host turns it on, and that is controlled with the app built in for free called the Cameraman app that only the host of a Hangout on Air actually gets to see or use. Can I bring up a question about events? Um, because I know this is an area that a lot of people have difficulties with, particularly with inviting and embedding and all that stuff. So if I bring Burns up just to, to serve as a base. I've got it highlighted. You want me to read that or you want to read it? Oh, you can read it. All right. Burn Rexer asks, only invited guests can engage in a Google Plus event where I host my Hangout on Air. And when he says engage, I'm not sure what that means yet. We'll see in a second. How can I open up the Google Plus event so anyone who views through Google Plus event can engage? Um, let me guess, and maybe Bern can modify the question. But engaging, in my mind, engaging means adding a comment. And I can bring that comment up right here with the comment tracker. Um, but sometimes it's harder for people to add a comment if you've made your event a, quote, you ready for this? On air event. It's it's a technical difference. An on air event is not a hangout on air event. 
There is no Hangout on Air button to press inside an event. I use the tool to do on air. I'm sorry, Hangout on Air events, but it is not an option for the tool. It's like magic. <laughs> so what I do is I will start a regular Hangout. Event. I'm sorry, I'll start a regular event without the Hangout choices, without the on air, without the Hangout, and I invite the public. Then the public is not on air. It's just the public. The public can come in. I can invite circles of people. They can come in. I can, can invite communities as well. They can come in, and anybody and everyone can interact or engage inside that event. The last step right before I go live is I have to take the YouTube video of my separate item, which is a Hangout on Air, take that view link of that video, go into the event's special fields, and paste it in the one called the YouTube URL, and then it shows up inside the event. Yes, I do this a lot, don't I? <laughs> well, is there any reason to be out to you? You know it. <laughs> I'll have to sit on my hands or something. Um, so you bring in your Hangout on Air as a separate item into a public event and then everybody can engage and it works really well. At least that's what it works for me. And Bern is in his comment here he says making comments. So yeah I guess I was guessing right. Meaning the ability to make comments might be limited primarily because of the way the event was created. If it's an on-air event that can limit who can comment. So I don't like using the on-air event. I don't like using the regular hangout event when I'm doing a public hangout on air that I want inside of an event, I just make it a plain event and add in the Hangout on Air video later. Hopefully Can I just sense. make a comment on, on you, actually, and about, about you know, the relationship you have with a lot of people? For those that don't know, when I needed to learn how to use a comment tracker, which is what we're looking at with the comments, and then we can you know, flip them around and things like that here, I go to Ronnie. That's who I go to, because he knows it better than I do. And I think that with the, the, the members area that you're building, that's really why you're doing it, is so that people can get their skill level up. And sometimes you just you need proximity, you need time. And when you're talking about the events, all of the options of the events, it, there are pitfalls. And in the same way, I've got lots of follow-up questions that I'd like to ask you, Ronnie, because I'd like to know the subtleties and of what you found and compare it to what I found. And that takes time, it takes effort, it takes energy. But I just wanted to say you know, publicly that you know, you're the person I go to when I've got questions on Hangouts. Well, thank you, Martin. And you? Mark gave a thumbs up there. Yeah, and uh, Big I thumbs know. up. I'll go audio so everybody can see it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Actually, what Mark just did there is a phenomenal example of being a great guest inside of Hangout. So, Mark, I'd like to point out what you've done and then give you kudos for it. What Mark had done is he was probably busy doing something else because... I'm not asking him questions, <laughs> even though normally he's here answering questions all the time. So what he's done, and you tell me if I'm wrong, Mark, but he muted himself so that any noise that was coming from the background or typing or whatever didn't actually capture the screen automatically and force him there into the big picture. Is that what you did, Mark? Yes, and I know you didn't do it here because all of us are pretty experienced being on Hangouts, but I know I heard you do it in the past, and when I am... Uh, in charge of a hangout, I routinely, in the prep for the show, will ask the guests, uh, please mute yourself when you're not speaking or being asked. It avoids that jump around that happens if somebody coughs or you know slams a door behind them and you get that momentary, yeah, that momentary jump of the screen that's uh, that's annoying to people. So great tip, yeah, just mute yourself when you're not speaking and you'll be a much better guest. Yeah, and I've made a little video about how to be a great hangout on our guest, and one of the things in there is I suggested as when you're speaking, make sure you're not muted, but when you are not speaking, it's a good idea to mute yourself. Um, and then um, someone else here, all right, go ahead. Before you jump to another question, yeah, can just we just reasons. expand the, the question of engagement beyond comments? Can you bring the video elements of someone into the film strip in a hangout on air. In other words, there's the four of us here. Can we invite someone else to join us right now? How hard is that? I could invite someone else to join us, and it's not, well, for, it's not hard for me, but it's hard for some. Um, you can invite people. What, what I would suggest, and this I learned from Sarah Hill, who is my hangout model. She is someone from way back who did some phenomenal work with hangouts, and still does. 
um, she vetted people. She would gather a group of people that eventually she did private hangouts with them, found out that, yes, this person knows how to use the tool, their background's good, they have a decent microphone, they went to a circle of safe hangout people. Then, when someone, one of them in, in, wants to be invited in, she knows she can just bring them right in and they're going to be safe, they're going to be good. Because as the host of a Hangout on Air, you are responsible for what's going on, and that means if someone comes in and actually is playing copyrighted music or something in the background, you might actually end up having a problem. And so it's just good to know who you're about to invite in rather than just any random person. So, But yes, I can invite anybody in at this point if I wanted to. Um, but right now, because we've got enough activity going in here and there, I'm going to leave it. Also, I visually don't like the film strip full unless people are able to interact. And because the primary focus here was to try to answer people's questions, I think we've probably got enough activity going on right now. Yeah, just to expand that, uh, to, sh to share, you know, another approach with a Hangout, and hopefully it'll work on a Hangout on Air, is we have a number of clients who run classroom training of 30 people or more, and they all want to interact visually, not just with the comments. And so what we've done, again, is have people on a second machine sitting in a group with their cameras on, and then using the encoder wirecast to grab who puts their hand up and bring them directly into the window. So the host is essentially monitoring both what we're doing right now and the second machine to find out, hey, which student wants to participate with their camera and grab them and present them. And it's worked really well with groups larger than, you know, 10, which are limited, uh, you know, on, uh, you know, Hangouts. I want to find out if that works well with Hangouts on Air. Okay, I'm going to jump to other questions for right now, rather than the deep dive on that particular thing. And Martin has one. Okay. Well, look, just a comment that that your guide that you mentioned earlier is very much appreciated, and and I think the point uh, that Lynn's making. So thank you. It's not just if you're a guest; it's also if you're running your Hangouts on Air, then to point people towards it to say this is what it's. You know, these these are some guidelines if you want to be a good guest. I think I was in on that one with Paulino, wasn't I? I believe you were, yes. Actually, and I'm, I, that was one. I do a lot. So I made another one that is... I it may, think not, it may not be that one, then. Well, no, I think it's part of that one. I've made multiple okay. versions of it. And someone that helps me slice and dice up my Hangouts into little more digestible pieces is this gentleman here, Scott Scowcroft. I just call him Scott, sorry. Anyways, it says, for someone who's new to Hangouts or Hangouts on Air, what's the best way to start? and how long before someone can reasonably be proficient, proficient as a guest and as a host? Great question. I'll try to answer it quickly, although I could, that's my living, so I could take forever to talk about that. In my mind, the best way to start is simply on your own. Just get into a Hangout on your own. Look what it, or actually back up. Watch some of my videos. Then get into a Hangout on your own and identify what all these parts and pieces are, play with them, you're there alone, no one else is watching, and then get comfortable with the tool. Then join in another private Hangout with somebody else and see how that works back and forth. Then join into someone else's Hangout on Air as a film strip member and then eventually run your own Hangout on Air as the host. That would be the progression that I think, if it's possible for you to go through that, is going to be most efficient and most comfortable for most people. Um, how long does that take? Uh, it depends. Depends on how quickly you learn all the parts and pieces. Depends on how many changes Google's made, and that's one reason for the mastery thing is they're constantly changing this thing all the time. So I, this is going to be a place for us to help keep up. Um, so you know, if Google just changed something, and you were just ready to start it, and now that button's not where it was, it can be a little bit um, unsettling, depending on who you are. So that, that was the question. Uh, let me bring up another. Oh, that was the one that Martin answered. Here's another one from, here's one from Wayne. So, Ronnie Benson, just to clarify, when you set up this event, you set up the event and then added the Hangout on Area later, and that is exactly correct. That is how I did it this time. Someone else here is saying, Jennifer over on YouTube is saying, say yes, just say yes to muting. Absolutely. And I think, Martin, you were bringing this one up. Caitlin is saying, I need an air quote. In intervention? <laughs> Maybe. It's spread. Dave started doing it then as well. 
You have to go back in the video and watch. <laughs> yeah, the, the rabbit. I know the rabbit you got it. Yeah. All right. So then, uh, a question here. John has is how do you customize the lower third with a logo? Um, that's a loaded question. What I've got down here and over there is all part of what's called a custom overlay. It is feasible that you can have like Martin. I'm going to highlight Martin here for a second. Martin has a lower third on which is pretty standard, but he's also added the logo to his Google Plus Your Biz or Plus Your Business community. At least, isn't that what that's for? Yeah, and Plus Your Life. And Plus Your Life. So the Plus Your plus fill your in the blank. Yeah. Plus Your Thing, yeah. Okay. And then I'm going to highlight Mark here for a second. Mark also is using a standard lower third, but he has the Verante logo. And so both Mark and Martin are using standard lower thirds but they've added in a logo graphic. Now I'm going to move over to Dave. Dave Williams is using something that looks totally different, and that is using the custom overlay. So both Dave and I are using custom overlays. I just happen to have something over there on the side as well. So, so how just do you to say, do that? the standard one on using Hangout Toolbox is very easy to adjust the color. That's what I did: is adjust the the color on the the strip to pretty much the same. I think I got it just about right to the logo. And I think it just makes it look a little prettier. It looks um, smashing. I could have added in. Smashing. Hmm? It looks smashing. smashing, yes. OK, it does. So the question then becomes, so that's easy. Now the question then becomes custom overlay. If people want a custom overlay, Ronnie, what do they have to do? To make your own custom overlay, kind of like what I've got here, is you make a graphic in the dimensions of 640 by 360. You make it clear where your face is, and you put pixels where you have other things, and that's saved as a .png ping format, and then it gets uploaded inside the Hangout toolbox, the sub app called the Hangout Lower Third, and once it's uploaded as a custom overlay, you can then save it, so it's available for you to change from lower third to lower third on an as-needed basis, which is what I did earlier. I had a different lower third, then I clicked on this one, and this is what I'm running for the remainder of the show. That answered have the question? Got, yeah, you have. But have you got videos for people to, to see on how to do all of that? Of course I've got videos for that. Uh, yes. I'm just checking. It wasn't even yes. a rhetorical of course. No, but I, do. It, I do. I know people want that. So. Yes, I yeah. do, and a lot of those are highlighted in so the membership. Where site. do we buy them, Ronnie? <laughs> 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 no, 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 no. You can see all a lot of these things are all gathered very easily so you can find them. So even if you don't want to learn all the brand new stuff but you want to figure out where all my stuff is, you can come into the membership site. That's a good place to find it. But that's where it is. It wasn't even like so they're not on the YouTube channel, it is on the membership site for No, they are on the YouTube. They oh, are yeah. on the YouTube channel as well. Okay. Um so the public ones and the, I guess as a point of clarification, the public ones are still going to be public. Everybody can see them. They're just a little bit harder to find because I've got so much that I do out there. So I've gathered them together easily for you to find them inside the membership site. That's one thing. But also the membership site is going to have some private video discussions that go into much more detail that the public is not actually going to be seeing. So mm -hmm. there is value there above and beyond just me curating all of my stuff in there. Smash. <laughs> I hope I used the word right, smashing. I mean, I'm trying to, Martin's from Wales, and I'm from Colorado, USA, so, you know, I don't usually use the word smashing, but I thought you might. Is that not, not a, <laughs> Did I misuse the word? No, I think you used it correctly. Smashing. I think if, it, if it was, I don't know, the 50s or something. Okay, so I'm a bit out of date, yeah. But, you know, I, I made a post once about how I love the word sorted, you know, the, the sorted seems to be, still be in vogue, right? It, if you got something sorted, it means you got it figured out or it finally worked out or something like that? Yeah. Isn't it, isn't it? yeah. yeah. Close, close enough? Okay, I, I shouldn't be oh. talking about idiomatic expressions. Ronnie, this, is, this has been a groovy experience. Uh, <laughs> I use groovy. Groovy you can have. The groovy That's never right. goes away, Mark. Uh, I, I do, as you knew previously, I do need to be a bad uh, hangout and air guest and, uh, and head no, out no, no, another no. another welcome to get to. You're well, thank you for having me uh, here for this. Great stuff. Uh, can't recommend to people enough that if you really want to understand Hangouts, you've got to follow Ronnie. And the opportunity that he's giving you now with this master class is something that everyone should take advantage of who feels they need that. Definitely recommend it. Thank you, Mark. And Mark, in my mind, is one of my best friends on Google+. And you know what? We've never actually met face-to-face, -face, but I feel I know Mark almost as well, if not better, 
than some of my best friends out there, which is really mm -hmm. an interesting testament to the power of the relationships you can build on Google+. Plus. Yeah, absolutely. Same here. Uh, and, and same with for Martin and us, I believe, and getting to know our new friend Dave Williams. So they're sure to be the same. Fantastic. Well, thanks, everybody. Um, Thank carry you. on, and Thank I'll watch you. the ending later. Yeah, Mark had a prior engagement, which is why he's about to leave. Now watch his thumbnail, which is going to be kind of neat. He'll sort of disappear, and we will continue on our conversation. No, no not that way. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Bye, everyone. Bye. Okay, so now uh, let's bring up another question here. Um, this one is from Christine. She's saying, what advice would you give to someone in a hangout if things went wrong? Oh, there's so many ways they can go wrong. If you were a moderator, would you ever pull the plug on someone or the entire hangout if you were an attendee? Would there ever be a case where you might bow out? Um, good questions. Uh, whoops, whoops, let me turn it off. There we go. Yes, things can go wrong. It does happen. I have actually shut it down and started over again. That does happen in case I'm the host of a Hangout on Air and I get kicked out for some reason or another. It actually does get shut down. You have about a 10-minute window before you can come back in. Otherwise, the thing is ended. It's done. So it's shut down for you. If somebody in the guest, the film strip, is constantly having problems, their microphone is giving feedback, it's nasty echo, it's just really bad, sometimes I mute them as the host. And anybody inside the film strip can mute anybody else, which is a good or a bad thing. Uh, it happens. And um, if you find that you're being muted, it's probably because you're making too much noise and you don't even realize it. And eventually, if I'm the Hangout on Air host and this person, unfortunately, is just not able to deal with the situation on their end, I will eject them and they will be gone, just like that. So, And in the process of ejecting, you are able to... Sorry, I did it again. <laughs> it's just built into what I do. Um, in the ejection process, you are able to block this person because you don't ever want to meet them again or just simply ignore them for the rest of this particular hangout. And that's usually the case. I just, if I need to kick them out, which doesn't happen very often to me because, honestly, what I do before the hangout on air starts is I try to work with my guests and make sure everything's working before I ever go live. So this is what I call the green room. It's before I start the show. I'll invite people in ahead of time, make sure that their mic's working, make sure there's no echo, make sure the sound looks, I'm sorry, this, the lighting is working. All this stuff works. Then when we're time to go live, we don't have those problems, generally. Other questions? I'm going to bring up Maylani's comment. She's saying, uh, uh, ScreenFlow for Mac, Camtasia for PC. These are the tools, third-party tools that I recommend for capturing a video of a private Hangout or a non-Hangout on Air. It says you can make a video out of it and then upload that to YouTube or wherever you want to upload it. Uh, here's Irene saying that she's got, she uses Sorted every day. <laughs> she does live in Glasgow. Yes. All right. Um, and George is mentioning that Camtasia does have a product for the Apple, for the Macintosh as well. And I agree. I just, when I tried testing it at first, I couldn't make it work because I was getting a little bit of an echo. And so as a result, I moved on to another product. They may have solved that. I just moved on to ScreenFlow. ScreenFlow works really well for me. And ScreenFlow is made by that company called Wirecast that also makes the, I'm sorry, the, the company's called Telestream, and they make the product called Wirecast, which is what Dave Williams has been referencing. And what we've talked about also in when we talk about live, YouTube Live. So we've got just a couple more minutes to try to keep it on schedule. Um, Julie is asking a question here about microphones. Sounds as if microphones are important for Google Hangouts on air. Yes, they are. I suggest getting one other than your laptop. <laughs> Bottom line, Martin is showing us the snowball, I think. This, yeah, but this was advice that you gave me. Wasn't yeah. It? Back in November, maybe it was, I think, and I said, what shall I get? And he said, well, that's that's a good option, um, and it's a, a very good price, and it seems to work fine. Yeah, the Snowball mic is made by a company called Yeti, and I forget the price point on that. Do you remember how much it costs, more or less? Yeah, I think the model's called Blue, actually. I think, just as so people know, I think oh, it's Blue. Made, but I think it's Blue, that one. Um, the, the price, I got it in right, the UK. Yeah, you're wrong. Yeti, I'm, I'm wrong. Yeti is the higher end. It's the 150. Yeah. Blue Yeti or Blue Snowball. Sorry. I think price-wise, I got it on an offer, maybe on Amazon, for something like $75, $80. Um, it, it was a good price. 
Yeah, and it's very nice in a sense because you don't have to put something on your head. Now, I use a headset, and I'm going to show somebody this. This is uh, uh, my lighting is probably going to make it hard to see. This is something that's relatively inexpensive. It's from GE. If you're in the U.S., you can get it for $30 at almost any office store. It's a one side, you know, my other ears open. It's got a microphone. It works wonderfully. The key is try not to just use your laptop because your laptop's microphone is so close to the speakers that it tends to bring in a bit of an echo. Mm -hmm. And if it doesn't bring an echo, what it does is the Hangout software tries to cancel the echo automatically and therefore your voice tends to get clipped at the end of a sentence. It'll cut off really quickly. So generally, if it's possible, you want to separate your speakers from your microphone. I do it with a headset. Martin's doing it with a built with a separate microphone. Dave, how are you doing things right now? Are you just? I'm doing things with a uh, lavalier mic, and the reason for that is uh, right now we're all sitting down on a chair. Uh, but it's all it's very useful to have a wireless mic so that you can walk around the room and not and be more mobile. And particularly when you're having a training session, uh, you're able to uh, you know wire yourself up walk around the room and have a camera that has a zoom lens on so that you can actually you know do training and be on the whiteboard and you know right away as the camera moves in and you can walk out so it's really interesting to uh, look at all the different ways you're going to use a hangout yeah let me bring up a bunch more questions we'll do them rapid fire and then we're gonna have to end so that I can keep closer to our time here um, whoops <laughs> we already covered that one sorry I gotta get rid of that uh, here, Brian is asking, what if one of your guests lets a curse word slip? Is there a way, any way to censor? The answer is no. Sorry, it comes across. Um, you can edit your video later, I suppose, but live, it's live. Uh, Logitech makes great stuff, and I think that's David mentioning things like the camera, because we didn't talk about the cameras, using an HD camera like a Logitech C920, which I happen to have right here. This is what the packaging looks like. I have not actually, this is real, it's in there. I haven't taken it out and used it yet, but it's something that I'm going to be doing shortly just to compare to what's built in to my Mac. Um, Chad brings up very good information about XSplit. That's another, that's a, a compete, another program similar to Wirecast that allows you to record private Hangouts or to render custom lower thirds or creative layouts and I believe XSplit also allows you to try to play another video in the process of doing your your show. Um, then another quick one here, Julie is adding how much setup time do you allow, do I allow before you start a hangout on air, getting people set up, testing sound, etc. Uh, it depends on who I'm inviting. If they're brand new then I would suggest at least a half hour. If they're someone that's been experienced then I just give them 15, you know, I still invite them in a half hour early if they want to come in 15 minutes before. That's probably fine. But trust me when I say if they're if they're in at the last minute, this is going to potentially be a problem because something isn't quite right. You just want to give it a, at least 15 minutes before you go live. Um, and we're already over our time. There's more questions still coming in. Here's what I'm going to do. I will go back to the event and try to answer as many of these questions as well as the YouTube comments and wherever else this might be out there in the stream and try to address your comments but please realize there's a limited amount of time the place if you want is some I have a public community called Hangout Helpers you can come in there and ask additional questions there but also you can join up today or tomorrow or soon if you join up today you'll get on the mailing list which simply tells you later in the day we're actually be live I don't know exactly we're launching today eventually you're going to be in here the membership area and then we'll have our own private community inside Google Plus and we'll go deep dive into those answers alright so gentlemen thank you for being part of the show we're going to wrap it up here thank you we appreciate um, everybody out there asking your questions and I'm hoping that the answers were helpful and actually I'm pretty sure they were <laughs> and that you you're getting the things that you need to know and I will still be in the public but you'll also have an opportunity here to come into the membership area thehangouthelper.com slash members and look forward to seeing everybody here there and everywhere so thanks for joining us thank you Dave I'm gonna blue box you here thank you it's been great to be part of the team you're, you're quite welcome thank you again Martin and thank you and 
Thank you. The rest of everybody else, see you soon out there. This is my Hangout salute. I do that near the end of the show many times. And I am now about to press the big red button on the top that says End Broadcast, and we will see you all on the outside. Bye. I'll do it as well. Bye-bye. Okay.